Hello again. A word that comes up a lot when we're talking about biology, physiology, and around the field of manual movement therapy is the word tension. Now, generally speaking, we can talk about tension in lots of environments, you know, like a, an energy or a feeling. We can talk about, you know, a tense political situation or a relationship or at work. And so therefore, when we're talking about it within our own field, generally speaking, we're thinking of it as something that's negative. So the opposite being relaxation. If I have tense shoulders, then these need to be, you know, released or relaxed. You know, the opposite of tension in this instance being relaxation. There's lots of applications to the word and lots of crossovers. So it's not surprising that when we start to see that there's um, this level of intermingling of the word, that there can be some confusion when this word tension gets borrowed from other disciplines and even walks of life uh, and then applied to what we might do. A good example of this is this continuous crashing of the word uh, by people who adhered, uh, adhere to this principle of something called a biotensegrity. It's kind of a a cult movement almost within the fascia movement itself and, and, and has crossovers within areas such as rolfing and, and um, other manual therapies. Tom Myers, the originator of um, Anatomy Train's principle, uh, and along with many others, uses a model known as a tensegrity structure to suggest that the human body is like these structures. Tensegrity is a word that was coined by an architect called uh, Buckminster Fuller back in the 60s. And then uh, a sculptor called Kenneth Snelson made a, a whole bunch of pretty cool tensegrity sculptures, um, one of which I happened to come across while I was in America. The idea of tensegrity caught on within the therapy field and is now quite commonly referred to and thought of as a good way of representing the human body. And it's been seized upon uh, using things like fascia and bone instead of wood and steel, you know, the ingredients of sculpt sculptures and building. The idea is that within these tensegrity structures that the dowels represent the bones and that the elastic connecting them represent the connective tissues um, and that it is being held together in one tensional unit. The bones somehow float in the body and the fascia holds it all together. Now it's an attractive idea and it's, it's something that is, you know, it's a good way to remind us of the conjoined nature of tissue in the human form, but it's like, any good idea, if you take it to extreme, it becomes a bit of a problem. Like, you know, a conspiracy theory, you can take a little bit of truth and then build a whole story that's false regardless uh, of, of how bonkers it is. And that's kind of what that whole biotensegrity movement has done. Unfortunately, it misses a massive point and it selectively applies this word tension and it picks it out from the structural model and uses it in a broad sense instead of a really limited one. The human body is nothing like a tensegrity structure when it comes down to it, and here's why. So as I said, the, the word tension can apply to lots of different environments and situations, and this is no different as far as the human is concerned. Let me give you an illustration of what I mean by looking at this packet of spaghetti as an example. We can see that the spaghetti strands are stiff and you know you could in theory if there were enough of them create stability and and have the basis for structure. I'm gonna say that people have built things out of spaghetti. <laughs> God, I love the internet. The human body is a collection of hugely diverse parts. Now, some of them have more movement and density through them than others. And it brings us to the main point that I bring, want to bring your attention to and have you think about next time you hear this word, tension. Tension is not the same as rigidity and rigidity is not the same as tension. Now the structures that you see in those tensegrity models are inert, rigid bits of wood that are held in place by lifeless pieces of elastic. They're cool demonstrations of physics, architecture, structural engineering, you know, what have you, but it bears no resemblance to the human body in any way meaningful. For a start, there are very few 
purely rigid structures in a body. You know, even bone isn't fully rigid. It's a honeycomb structure designed for allowing a degree of movement, however slight, and also able to adapt to those pressures as well. A rigid structure can't do that. Rigidity in human tissue, or you know, any biological structure for that matter, is going to tend uh, to lean towards it being broken very easily. It needs flexibility built into its system for it to be functional. The human form is much more of a conjoined system than we give it credit for, but just having the ingredients all in one place doesn't mean that dinner is taken care of by itself, even if it's spaghetti. Let me put this really simply. You can't stand a dead person up. Now, they've got all the bits that you need, but they have no tension. There is nothing in there, however joined up, that will allow those parts of the body to have the tension or movement that other humans have. The physical relationship is there, but the tension isn't. Could they even have some rigidity in joints? Yeah, well, maybe, but tension, absolutely not. The structures that we have in our system, instead of being rigid, have tension as a result of a charge going through them. Fascia, for example, is not a tensional structure at all, it's very wet and exists within a fluid medium that has a constant supply of energy running through it in order to keep us alive. Dr. Frankenstein understood this and you know he knew that you need electricity to make your collection of parts move around. So what happens if we consider these structures differently as a wet system? There it is. There's no tension or rigidity in here. You're not building anything on that. There's no weights gonna sit on that at all. The only thing that's gonna sit on that is some basil and maybe some olive oil and a little bit of garlic and some parmesan cheese, excuse me. What? Muscle moves when it's given an instruction to do so from the central nervous system. And this is done via a frequency signal that is transmitted to motor neurons and these are connected to muscle fibers and this connection is known as a motor unit. The muscle can't move, slide, or even be tense unless it's given the fuel and the information to do so. Now there's lots of different types of muscle, fast twitch and slow twitch, and I'll talk about that another time, but the principle is always still the same. There is no inherent tension in the human body. While we're alive, our muscles are always in tension to some degree, and I mean always. There's this notion, and you hear this a lot, that sometimes people will say um, certain muscles aren't firing, you know, my glutes aren't firing. And we talk about it within the idea about contractility and tension areas such as uh, the gluteals or the, the abdomen that we have to fire for some reason. I'm here to tell you that there's only one time that you can ever switch a muscle off and that's for the last time. Death permanently removes your capacity to voluntarily move a muscle and muscles become floppy at death and completely soft. It's why I'm never really sure why people are so obsessed about dissections that are unembalmed and being lifelike. You know, there's no lifelike quality to floppy wet muscle. Another good example is corn flour. We can see that starchy molecules have trapped water in them, put energy into the ball in the form of my own energy from muscular tension, and it maintains its form. Take the source of energy away, and hey presto, it's a liquid form again. Dr. Frankenstein was able to fire up his monster with electricity, and Voltaire back in the day um, had similar twitch success with frogs, but Within the reality of our world, tension only exists in the human form during life. It doesn't come from anything else except the electrical charge or energy that is converted from our food. When the muscle has no tension, this is not a good thing, this is a bad thing. If I hold your arm while I passively lift it and I say, relax, relax, let me have it, there will always still be a degree of tension there, even if you, know, you are fully relaxed and giving it to me. When this tension isn't there, this is called hypotonia, and it is a sign of a problem, a neurological problem. So there you go, there is no inherent tension in the body. Big statements this week. Fascia has no tension. The body is like a bowl of pasta. <sighs>
<laughs> so what do you think? Uh, where have you heard tension? What does tension mean to you? What does tension feel like to you? Have you felt things change underneath your hands? And what do you think that might be? So please uh, put your comments in the uh, comment section below. Please like, subscribe, do all those things you're supposed to do, supposed to do in social media. And I will see you next time.